Hey there, this is Lady Jamers, and welcome to this month's Cooking and Baking with Lady Jamers. This month, I'm making bangers and mash. And what is bangers and mash, you ask? It's basically sausage and potatoes. This is the mash, and this is the banger. It is a uh, comfort food from Britain, and that includes... Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and England. The term bangers are supposedly originated during World War I. There was meat sausage shortages and the sausages would actually explode because they put water in with all the other meat fillers. And I have to tell you that it was another meat shortage that got me started on making bangers and mash a lot more than I ever did before. That was the pandemic. I noticed that sausage was easy to make and it was cheap. Now I have to admit, never really made it before the pandemic because I was basically afraid of uh, explosions. Not the explosion of the sausages per se, but explosion of the grease. And I have found a way to combat both of those. And that's why I'm going to show you in today's video. Now, like I said, for the actual ingredients, you can use sausage, you can use potato, and those are the two main ingredients of bangers and mash. Because mash is basically mashed potatoes. Uh, they say for the best um, mashed potatoes, get Yukon Gold. To me, it doesn't really matter. I like to go for the cheapest ones, which is the russet, the brown one, so you have to peel them. You can also use red potatoes, and you can peel or not peel those, and uh, the little fingerling uh, small potatoes. And once again, you uh, can uh, peel or not peel those. Um, for the little tiny potatoes, you might not want to mash them so much, or you do. Um, I can tell you, if you get that tricolor, it would be an interesting mash, don't you think? Because they have that purple and the red and the, the regular kind of white. So, for the gravy part, I just use brown gravy and then I add the starch from the potatoes here's my potatoes boiling and the oil the the butter we didn't start the uh, the baking of the sausage yet because the mashed potatoes take longer to make than the um, the sausage but I do have one way that you can also do you can microwave your potato and then mash it and when you're mashing the potatoes you want milk and if you really want to be decadent use heavy cream and then use some butter and salt and pe pepper and away you go. Easy comfort food. I'm going to show you the actual ingredients at the end of the video. And um, 
I'm doing the ingredients for uh, two people. I have uh, more sausage because what I'm doing is you do a sausage link about yay big for for one person. Now, if you're making a real meal of it, like big meal, use two sausages. Uh, for mom and I, I'm doing uh, one sausage for our lunch because I'm doing this in the daytime and one sausage for work at night tonight and I'm splitting the fourth sausage in half and uh, do it evenly amongst the two lunches and the one dinner. So we will be right back. Um, I am doing, I'm charging my gimbal. I uh, let that accidentally be put away when it was on and I thought it was off. Oops. So we'll be right back. Now, believe it or not, the uh, gimbal is still uh, charging, and Rowan even uh, play with it half done. Here is the sausage, and I have a lot of butter here. Here is the the potatoes boiling; they're almost done. And up here. This kind of wrinkled thing is the microwave uh, potato. So my plan is to uh, basically basically show you both rays. Now, just to show you while we're here, uh, the way to not get them to explode is you just poke them and I have found that you can poke it with a knife you can poke it with a spoon but well, you can't poke it with a spoon uh, and um, you can use a fork I meant fork not a spoon and I can tell you that uh, basically this uh, video is like all of my videos. There's always one little hitch going on. Today's hitch is the gimbal. And me saying Wong Fu. Now, as you can see, what is better to poke? The knife. So like do three or four little pokes. I, uh, as you saw in the picture, I get a big thing, a country sausage, and then I cut it in links, and that big uh, round of country sausage usually makes about three or four different meals. And normally, I would do this as two meals, but I thought for this video, I would do basically two meals from these four sausages and potatoes to make bangers and mash. Another little tip is, you know how I was talking about explosions of grease per se? This is how you do about not getting explosions of grease. Make sure that you poke it and then you put the, the cover on. The cover will uh, make it so that the grease doesn't hit you and also helps to uh, have the food cook from within and as you can see on the little cover the all the grease is hitting the, the lid and uh, you cook it on one side until it's uh, brown now I've noticed it's better to cook when it's between brown and black per se 
that way you get a better crust and um, you're sure that it's cooked all the way through. The steam from putting the cover on also helps cook it through and then you put the water uh, in there to create more steam and it helps to cook it through and not make it so dry and then you take out the uh, sausages and you make the gravy right in here and I will show you that in a moment. We're doing the Kimberless Cooking Stream by Lady Jamers. And the potatoes are done from when I first started to do this video. How you can tell your potatoes are done is you just fork it and if it comes apart, it's done. If it doesn't come apart, it's not done. And um, also it takes about, I'd say, 20 minutes to do potatoes. Uh, remember, salt like the sea, and then your potatoes will have a lot of, uh, you know, taste and all, and won't be bland. And then you add some butter and milk, and um, put the. Don't forget to drain this, and you put all the uh, like drain. Uh, water into here and that's what makes the gravy now on this when do you know to you know flip the sausages basically you're be able to tell by uh, smell believe it or not uh, your smell them actually cooking and then um, you flip them. You also can wait like two minutes, put like uh, about two to three minutes on one side, two to three minutes on the other side, and voila, your sausages are done because you are like steaming them from within. And there you go. So let me take this off. You have to watch. And I like to flip them with a fork. Now, right there, that is starting to get done. But it's not done yet. So what I like to do sometimes is I like to flip them a couple of times to make sure they're actually done done. Um, I usually do only two at a time. So it's easier to uh, flip. Now, that one, you know, all these other ones are, like, cooked, especially that one. I have one spot of the stove that is not that hot, and then the other spots are. So, that is why that happens. Plus, you, uh, it's another reason to flip more than one time. Get the top, put it all back on, and we will be right back. Here is the finished product. Put that there for now. And how can you tell your sausages are done? I always like to cut through one of them and Flip this around. This is hard even with two hands doing this. And you can tell right there that there is no pink inside. And when there's no pink inside, it means it's done. Now I'm going to put the sausages on this plate and Then we're going to make the gravy now. There we go. Put this one right there. And now for the gravy. Wish me luck on doing this one hand. 
Okay, so basically you pour in some of that and you don't want to do a lot of the juice because then your uh, gravy will be too watery. And if you want to make it even more kind of beefy, add some beef broth. And you can add that to it. You can also put some onions, mushrooms in here if you want. And now for the brown gravy. You can also make your own brown gravy. I find this is the easiest. How much? Uh, I never know. I just eyeball it. And one sec. There you go. Now you can whisk this or you can... Um, Put a wooden spoon if you have a non-stick uh, paint, and this is where you do the uh, it in the in the fry pan because the fry pan has all the little juices. Now that clumps is the brown gravy because I will tell you, you always uh, well I always have it go into clumps, uh, the science behind that. And the more you store, the more it goes. Now you can add a little bit more of this kind of juice if you have it. And if you don't, you go over here to your teapot and pour some of that in. I'm making a tea for mom and I. What more better to have with your bangers and mash? There's the bangers, there's the mash, then having tea. So, as you can see, the more water you put in, the more liquidy it gets, but also you don't want to put all the water in at Force because then your gravy won't really have time enough to uh, cook. And I like when I'm doing bangers and mash, I kind of like my gravy to be more on the thinner side than on the thicker side. So let's let that store. That's basically the consistency that I want. And put this aside. And we'll turn off the stove. And next up is the uh, making the mashed potatoes. Now, I strained the rest of the uh, water off. Now, here's the microwave one and here's the on the stove top which is better honestly in the long run uh if you have some time and patience doing the old-fashioned way is better this one is good you have to work it right away it this was uh four and a half minutes and i'm just gonna plop that in there we are going to add butter at least one tablespoon and a lot of people like to uh, put cheese and garlic in their mashed potatoes uh, I'm old-fashioned like that I just like my butter my milk my salt and pepper and mash so here's some of this and um, I'm putting some of the uh, this in there now take off the tea how much you put in of the liquids is a little bit kind of like doing gravy you uh, put a little bit in you mash 
and then you uh, yeah, salt and pepper and let me get the masher I had it out there it is and you just mash away and um, you can tell you have too much liquid when the liquid stays in there um, and that is why you only put a little bit of liquid mash some a little bit of liquid mash some and there you go now when you are done this part you can put more butter on top more salt and pepper to taste and then you get a bowl you put this on the bottom put that on the top and then you cover it with the gravy and there you have it and i'll show you the finished product coming so i like to cut up the sausage because that way it's easier to uh eat when you're sitting in your chair and pour on the gravy as much or as little as you want and there you go <laughs> and sorry for getting off of the uh subject like i said we're doing this video kimberless next up is the taste so here it is bangers and mash it's been an interesting video doing this uh gimberless but that doesn't mean the food doesn't taste good i love country sausage and the potatoes came out so nice and creamy you have to try this for yourself Bangers and mash is easy, economical, and more. So, it's the ultimate comfort food. Now, I want to uh, show you the, uh, the ingredients after this part, plus also a bonus. I did another intro, and... Um, and I messed up on a word, so I wanted to redo the intro, and I messed up on a word, so I redid the intro over and over and over again, which is why you saw that little disclaimer between the two uh, that I'm going to put there. So, like I said, get bangers a match. It is so good. Uh, country sausage, brown gravy, mashed potatoes, how can you go wrong? This is Lady Dreamer saying have a great day and we will see you later.
Hey there, and welcome to this month's Cooking and Baking with Lady Dreamers. I am doing this in two little parts, uh, basically. Um, I'm doing this before, this part before I'm cooking, because let's face it, I'm being lazy and um, didn't want to switch, change out of my sweatshirt, which I go to the gym, but my cat needs me. And right here is my cat. He needs me. So, this month is about bangers and mash. And I'm doing it for uh, St. Patrick's Day, but it's also a British and Scottish dish. And... Why I'm, reason I'm doing this in two parts is that I wrote down some stuff about it, and I wanted to tell you. And um, during the actual video, I'm going to be wearing my green ears with my St. Patrick's Day uh, bow. Right now, I'm doing my British uh, ears and my cat sweat short that I wore to bed last night. So, here we go. After a minute 40. <laughs> Bangers and mash is sausage and mashed potatoes. It originates from Britain as well as Ireland, Scotland. And yes, I am doing this in my bedroom in front of the window. And cats or something. It's the ultimate comfort food that is normally served with onion gravy. I personally make it with brown gravy with the grease of the sausages and the butter. It, like I said, bangers and mash is the ultimate comfort food. The term banger supposedly originated during World War I because of meat shortages. The, that made the sausage explode because basically, instead of all meat in the sausage, they put other fillers and that made the sausage boosh. And uh, when it was cooked. Being a British descent, I have always liked it, but didn't make it that much for myself before the pandemic, to be honest truth. Uh, mostly to the fact that I was uh, slightly afraid of cooking sausage, not for the explosion factor, but for the grease factor. And um, I have found a way to make it so you're not splattered with grease and today's sausages. You don't have to worry about the explosion factor unless you get really cheap sausages. So, going back to why I started making it, as we all know, during the pandemic, supplies were low and you were lucky if you could get, you know, meat. And I saw our local giant had, uh, the sausages were a good price. So, um, what are you doing? Um... So, anyway, I love country sausage. You can use any sausage for this. Um, you can use bratwurst. You can use uh, what they call... Um, is the Country Joe's actually has what they call a... Uh, Irish banger, which is basically still country sausage. The ingredients are very little in there. Uh, you can do this with Italian sausage, but it gives it a whole nother kind of taste. It's not 
really uh, British tasting, which um, before I went to Britain in uh, 2005, was it? Yeah, I went in 2000, um, 2000, but in 2005, I went with my sister and niece and we really did uh, the food of England. And we were told that the food was very bland. And I guess it's because we are of English descent. It's not bland to us. It's perfect. We love it. And um, so going on this rant or rambling, as I should say, with Oliver by my side, uh, I say you should try bangers and mash today, and I will show you how to make it. Here's a picture of the ingredients for bangers and mash right here. And then we are on with the show. Be right back. 